This is a global condition, it's a little bit like a, a global bushfire, you know. What happens now is determined by what's happening elsewhere and what happens with us will determine what happens. So what we need to know is... And as we're speaking, people getting infected today, we won't know about it for two weeks. Exactly. So we, can, we, we need to know as much data as we can because at the moment, I was just saying before, this is a condition we've never seen before. I, was, I mean, I was, out, I was out yesterday and I was, I was in the supermarket and I just thought, nobody has an idea what's about to happen. And that's what we need. No one has an idea. But we, the data's there. But is if we this, can't gather this... it and analyse it, that's our failure. What do you want from me? I think we need to get the government... The government are still looking this as a... This is an interesting research study that a uh, crazy Scottish professor is interested in. It's not. This is a public health initiative that the, the world intensive care community is looking to Australia to say, help us. We're giving you our data. All we need is some funding to get the best use out of this. Because that could save your mum or my mum. How much do you need? It's about a million. So we've got a whole team um, based in Sydney and based in Brisbane and looking not at the medical, so we put as much data as we can get from these 24 countries we've got worldwide, over 100 centres, put the data in and with it, the more data we get, the more the machine can learn and then we can give you decision support and say, for this patient, you should try this because I've analysed this much data. Because you might not have to go straight to ventilation. Yeah. You, might you, just you can see with these parameters, we can't do this. So is that what you need the money for? Is that the research? Yeah, well, we money? have to get the money. And again, I don't actually think it's research. No, I think it's a public health imperative because we've got no way of learning this. There's no book I can go to and see what do you do because it's a brand new condition. So we need the money to get a team because it's a global responsibility that we've got here in Australia. We don't have any data. We're driving blindfolded and we have the information there. We just need to gather it analyse it and disseminate that out to the intensive care community. That's why they've joined this, this public health initiative. And presumably it also tells you whether somebody needs ventilation at all and you can wait a couple of days and exactly. ventilate somebody else. And that's really, really important. When we don't have enough ventilators, we're doubling the intensive care capacity across uh, ventilation ac across Australia. But at the moment, if the predictions are right, we might not have enough ventilators. So it's really important what you said. So you're trying to get better decision support. So if you're a registrar or a consultant in intensive care, you're looking at this person, you'd say, look, according to the international data, we can actually keep you in the ward for another yep. two days. Which we'll allows someone that's sicker to go into the intensive care and use that ventilator more appropriately. Well, you, the stories here from Italy are that, you know, people are, you know, intensive care specialists are making terrible decisions, then it, it racks them. So if you're over 60, you've been put to one side because there are 30 and 40 year olds dying of this. And what's it going to feel like when you've got two patients in front of you They've both got three or four kids, mm -hmm. one's 40 and one's 60, and you're going to choose this 40-year-old. It's going to be difficult. Uh, please God, it doesn't get to that, but it can get to that. I don't know. I've never been faced with it before. And this is why it all comes down, I sound boring like a broken record, but it all comes down to getting as much of a global experience together to know what to do. We spoke to the people in Canada there, they've joined in as well, and obviously the, the SARS epidemic. And one of my colleagues during the SARS epidemic had to do exactly what you said, and they picked this patient, not this patient. This and, was in Toronto. Yeah, and he was then charged with manslaughter. You're kidding. Charged with manslaughter because he made a decision, this one, this one. We don't know. How are you feeling about it yourself? Yeah, it, it, it is real. You know, you're my, scared? Um, yes. I mean, I think I'm fit. I'm 51, but I'm, I'm on the up flick of the curve. Uh, I'm, do you put your children first, which is what you always do when you're a parent, or do you put your patients first, which is what you've been taught to do since you graduated at Baird Hall at Glasgow University years ago? I think you will not find intensive care specialists in Australia not going into work. I think they'll turn up. But it's that you, I'm going to give my, child, my children an extra risk. Is that okay? I think as John said, this isn't actually research. Um, the minister bangs on the whole time about translational research and health. They spend a fortune doing that. Here is a moment in time where you can actually apply research into action within minutes and hours. Um, it, the government will lose huge credibility if they don't actually fund something like this. This is not wasted money. This is applying research knowledge into action in real time. If you lose a few days, you will regret it 14 days after that. And what's going to happen there is that if we lose the plot now, then intensive care units all over the country will be swapped. They'll be making difficult decisions. 
Um, they'll have a 40-year-old and a 60-year-old very sick, and in China there are, and in Italy there are plenty of 30 and 40-year-olds dying of this with no other diseases. We don't know why, and they'll be making a decision. I've got a 40-year-old and I've got a 60-year-old. They've both got kids, but I'm going to choose the 40-year-old. That's what's going to happen. Difficult decisions. The 60-year-old gets put in the corner to die.